So in this video we're going to look at the uh, waveguide slot again and uh, this uh, particular design is for 5.8 gigahertz FPV and this time it's uh, omnidirectional so uh, you can actually use it vertically uh, as an omnidirectional antenna or I've got a little twist later on in the video that we can uh, actually add an adapter to this to turn it into a directional antenna so it's a pretty versatile design so let's get the tools out then and I'll show you how I actually made this now to make this antenna you're going to have to find yourself some uh, tubing here I've got some copper tubing I actually picked this up off eBay I bought a uh, meter of it for less than 10 pounds and uh, this tubing is uh, 28 millimeters in diameter that's the outside diameter of the tubing and I've got uh, it cut down to a length of 200 millimeters so what you're going to have to do is download the uh, template and print it off and I'll leave a link in the description below where you can actually download this and uh, I've made this template specific to the 28mm uh, diameter of this particular tubing but uh, if you find something that's a 30mm uh, diameter this should fit quite nicely around that as well so here's the template actually stuck to the tubing itself and uh, there's actually a crucial point to applying the template to the tubing the uh, template is just slightly less than 200 millimeters so I've got a slight gap here at the top but uh, what you have to actually pay close attention to when applying the template is uh, this uh, hole here that we're going to drill out is uh, just slightly over a quarter of a wavelength at 5.8 gigahertz so uh, this has to be uh, lined up exactly with the uh, edge of the tubing here just so that measurement actually lines up when we actually uh, drill the hole and uh, create the uh, main driven element there so make sure you've got your template lined up with the edge of the tubing here at the bottom and uh, the top it doesn't matter so much but uh, that measurement from there to the uh, bottom end of the tubing is quite crucial so next I'm going to cut out the slots in the tubing now you may notice that uh, each one of these slots has got a dot at either end and I've actually put those in to make it easier to line up a drill bit because what I'm going to do is use a four millimeter drill bit drill a hole at each end of the slot and then I'm going to use my Dremel tool with a cutting wheel and cut out the long straight bits separately and that way it's a really easy task to actually cut out these slots quite um, you know accurately but uh, although because there is a lot of them it does take a little bit of work and a little bit of time to actually cut them out but it's a really neat way of doing it and you can use a uh, file at the end to just clean them up a little bit now I am using a small drill press to actually drill the holes at each end of the slot but uh, it's actually just as easy to do this with a uh, Dremel tool but uh, one thing that I would do to actually help you uh, drill the holes and get them uh, in the middle of this slot exactly where you want them at the ends here is if you uh, get a uh, small hole punch and put a small hole punch mark on the uh, ends of the slot where you want to drill the hole then use something like a uh, 1.5 millimeter drill bit to drill a much smaller hole first and then put on your four millimeter drill bit to actually finish it off just uh, drilling the small guide hole first makes a uh, much neater job of it rather than jumping straight into the uh, four millimeter drill bit so I've got a few tips to actually help you when you're actually cutting these out with a rotary tool like this now first one is if your cutting wheel gets too small get rid of it and get a new one it's much easier to actually do this with uh, you know a uh, large cutting wheel rather than one that's uh, worn down and it's quite small secondly make sure your bench is completely clear and uh, actually have a uh, nice flat surface and the back of the rotary tool actually have that touching the uh, bench itself and that way you can actually control this a lot better if you're holding it up like this it's going to shake and vibrate all over so make sure you've got the end firmly down on the bench and that gives you some more control over how you actually cut this now the second thing that I do I actually have this on the slowest setting and what I do is I cut a groove uh, 
in there first so I'll cut a groove where I actually want to cut out top and bottom and once I've cut the groove I actually turn it up so it's a, a faster RPM and then I actually cut the rest out by keeping it in that one position there and uh, the sides here actually get cut out as the wheel cutting wheel drops down into the slot itself So now that I've got the grooves cut top and bottom, I can turn the speed up slightly on the uh, cutting tool to actually cut the rest out. So I've finished cutting out the slots with the Dremel tool and I've also drilled a uh, one millimeter hole here where the uh, main driven element is going to be attached to. So what I'm gonna do now is get rid of the template so then I can better see the uh, slots themselves and I can clean them up a little bit with a uh, hand file. So now that I've got the uh, slots cut out on the tubing, I'm going to move on to uh, the main driven element so we can actually connect to this antenna. Now as for the coax you can use either semi rigid coax or you can use a more traditional coax it really doesn't make uh, much difference the uh, method for actually connecting it is uh, exactly the same for both but uh, I'm going to use some semi rigid coax that way it's uh, strong enough to actually support the uh, adapter that you can use on this and to finish off either end I'm actually using these uh, copper end pieces that are designed to go on this particular tubing I picked these up off eBay I actually picked five up for uh, eight pounds free shipping but uh, if you're actually searching for these uh, spend a little time um, going over all the prices because the prices of these do uh, vary wildly I don't think copper is uh, as expensive as it was a few years ago but there are definitely a few sellers out there trying to uh, you know get quite a lot of money for these end caps but uh, I managed to pick five up for uh, eight pounds now this one here is the uh, first one that I actually built after making a uh, cardboard mock-up of this now I didn't use these uh, end caps on this one as you can see but what I actually did is uh, I cut out some uh, circles of uh, tin from just you know normal cookie tin and uh, actually fitted that around the top there and uh, because soldering this is quite difficult because it's such a uh, thick piece of copper uh, you need quite a strong blowtorch but um, I've just held that in place with some uh, copper tape that you can also get this copper tape off eBay quite cheaply or from a garden centre uh, as a uh, slug repellent people put the tape around their pots so uh, that's an, just another idea of actually uh, doing that and you can just solder directly onto the copper tape there and it does a good job of holding that in place but I'm going to use these uh, end caps to finish the uh, top and bottom of this antenna so I'm going to prepare one of the end caps now drill a small hole through there so I can fit my coax through and then on into the main driven element into the uh, actual waveguide itself so I've drilled a hole in the center of uh, one of the end caps so I can feed the coax through for the main driven element but I thought I'd quickly explain why uh, this particular diameter of copper tubing is the uh, smallest um, size that you could actually use if you were building a uh, omnidirectional waveguide for 5.8 gigahertz. Now the reason why it's the smallest size that you can uh, get away with using is the outside diameter of this uh, copper tubing is 28 millimeters and the inside diameter is 26 millimeters. Now what we actually need to do is feed our copper uh, main driven element, our coax sorry, directly into the center of the tubing so it radiates out 360 degrees all throughout the length of the wavelength and a quarter wavelength at uh, 5.8 gigahertz that I'm working on is 12.9 uh, millimeters now the inside as I've already mentioned the inside diameter is 26 millimeters so if you add 12.9 uh, millimeters together and times it by two you actually get 25 0.8 millimeters so this uh, copper tubing is the absolute minimum that you could get away with actually using because the main driven element needs to be uh, the radius of the uh, tubing because it needs to be fed 
directly in the middle so uh, you couldn't get away with using something like uh, say uh, 24 millimeters or 25 millimeters because there wouldn't be enough room inside the tubing to get that uh, quarter wavelength uh, away from the center there to the side wall of the tubing and that's why I'm actually using 28 millimeters it's very very important you can get away with using uh, something slightly bigger as well and just slightly uh, off center it as the feed especially if you're just going to use a directional one so you're only cutting slots on uh, one side of the tubing for instance but because I'm creating a omnidirectional one here it really wants to be in the uh, center of the tubing for it to work correctly so I've stripped away that outer braid to expose the inner core here and uh, what I've done is uh, from the end of the braid here that's uh, still attached to the uh, coax I've just uh, pushed that up against the bottom edge of the tubing here and where the uh, little hole is where our main driven element is going to come out through I've uh, just put a little black mark so I'm going to make a right angle bend there so it'll come up into an L shape and then feed through uh, the uh, hole there and because it'll be a little bit difficult to actually get the end cap on once I put that bend in I've put the end cap on now so hopefully I can feed all this through in one go and I'm not going to solder the end cap what I'm actually going to do is because it's quite a nice uh, flush fitting I'm just going to put a little drop of uh, super glue in say three areas push the end cap on and that should be good enough to get that uh, connection there to seal the tubing up and hold the uh, end cap in place so I'm now ready to solder the uh, driven element in place and what I've done to actually help me is uh, I've put a little black mark there just uh, measured off a quarter wavelength plus an extra millimetre to take into consideration the uh, thickness of the uh, copper tubing. So that black mark is going to help me to actually line up the uh, driven element here so I can solder it in place permanently and I know that all this is directly in the centre of the uh, copper tube in there and then I can push the end cap on with uh, a little bit of super glue just to uh, attach it in place. So that's the main driven element soldered in place and uh, I've thought afterwards uh, it will probably be a little bit easier if before you actually add this is uh, use a small blowtorch and uh, get a little bit of uh, tin flowed around that hole just prior to actually attaching all this it probably make it a little bit easier to solder that driven element in place because even with the soldering iron turned right up it is at the uh, end of its limit but uh, we've got a good solder joint there now so what I'm going to do is get the Dremel tool smooth it up a, a little bit just so I can actually push the uh, cap over the top of this to protect it and also finish off the uh, base of the uh, antenna itself so I've ground that down now so what I'm going to do is just put a uh, couple of little drops of super glue just on the edge there and then basically push the end cap up and over and to finish it off I'm just going to flow a little bit of solder around the hole in the uh, end cap as well just to solder the outer braid directly to the end cap just so we've got a nice strong connection there and I'm going to attach the end cap to the top of the antenna now because I actually purchased these after I actually cut out the slots in here and decided how long I was going to have the tubing if I push it all the way on it's uh, actually going to cover some of those slots so I'm just going to put it in just to the top of the uh, slots itself and again a couple of dabs of super glue just to hold this in place so here is the uh, finished waveguide then and uh, I think it looks uh, pretty good but I wouldn't go walking around the uh, high street with one of these sticking out your back pocket for uh, obvious reasons really. Now as I said this uh, particular design is omnidirectional and uh, you might be thinking well I only really want a uh, directional one but uh, if you actually go to the effort of cutting out all the slots for the omnidirectional version if then you get another piece of the uh, pipe and actually cut it just slightly uh, rounder than half like I have there and uh, the piece that came uh, out of here I've also cut that down a little bit as well and actually riveted it on uh, 
the back here and uh, ground down the inside so it sits flush on the pipe and uh, this is to actually help me to remove this because what I can do now is uh, very carefully stick this on like so and now what I've got is a uh, completely directional antenna so I've got uh, the best of both worlds an omnidirectional and a uh, directional one and because we've got that little uh, puller thing on the back there it's uh, quite easy to actually come off and that's the reason why I haven't painted this part of the antenna because it would just get scratched up and everything by uh, applying this and uh, removing this reflector so I've just left it as is just buffed it up a little bit with some wire wool now as I mentioned previously in the uh, 2.4 uh, gigahertz version of the slot antenna that I built this uh, particular antenna is really uh, a narrow bandwidth so it's really specific to the uh, actual frequency that you make it for now normally uh, when I've built something like this in the past I can give it a quick test with say a uh, 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi card just to give you a general idea on how it actually performs but unfortunately because this is so uh, specific to the uh, band that I've made it it wouldn't work in the uh, 5 gigahertz uh, region now I was going to set up a uh, experiment on the uh, spectrum analyzer I had it all planned out a couple of weeks ago but unfortunately I'm now looking for a new spectrum analyzer because mine has completely died but uh, the measurements and everything else are uh, spot on for the frequency and although there's not many videos showing you how to make this it's uh, a tried and tested uh, design and uh, I don't fly quadcopters uh, you know if you're a new subscriber and you don't realize that all I actually do is design antennas so unfortunately I can't set up a uh, test at this moment in time to actually show you how well it actually performs now as far as power is concerned because this is actually a uh, proven design I haven't reinvented the wheel here you can work out how much uh, power potential something like this is and because each one of these slots is effectively a uh, dipole antenna you can uh, basically say that each slot is uh, 2.5 dB and if you add them all up you will get uh, 15 dB now what I tend to do is actually knock off one for that so if uh, somebody was to ask me how powerful this antenna is I would say 12.5 uh, dB and that way uh, you're covering all your bases because when um, you know uh, people work out dB as a uh, formula they're actually uh, working it out in uh, free space under perfect conditions no humidity in the air anything like that so when I'm actually working out uh, DB for my uh, antennas I tend to knock a little bit off to take into consideration that so this is uh, in effect a uh, pretty powerful antenna and a pretty powerful design that's why uh, I wanted to actually do a few of these I think it's uh, a really interesting design and of course you know if you make yourself one of these and uh, block off the uh, other slots you've got a powerful directional antenna then so you've got all that db going uh, in one area rather than omnidirectional so it'll make it uh, a little bit more as far as range is concerned you'll get some more range out of it so as I said with the first video there's a, a lot of potential with this particular design I've got quite a few different ideas how we can actually take it forward and uh, I'm just ordering the parts now to actually make a uh, 2.4 gigahertz one that uh, is basically the same as this it's just we're using a uh, larger diameter of pipe but um, I think this uh, particular design is uh, pretty cool especially when you can turn it into a uh, directional antenna as well just by uh, simply adding this uh, reflector on here and um, I have actually just received into the lab a uh, retail version of the uh, slot waveguide it's for 2.4 gigahertz and uh, that's come all the way from Australia and uh, I'll be doing a teardown of that uh, soon as well comparing the measurements to the uh, first uh, slot antenna that I actually made just to see if they actually match up with my measurements and uh, I'll uh, do an outside test with that as well probably compare it to the uh, Bicord Yagi or something similar 
so i hope you enjoyed this video any uh, comments or questions then please drop them below and i'll do my best to answer them if you did enjoy it please give it a uh, thumbs up it really does help here on youtube and uh, hopefully you'll join me for the next one